I really have no idea what I wrote because my handwriting's that bad. Hey everyone, it's Lori, and I'm here today uh, sharing my favorite audiobook narrators. Now, if you happen to have seen uh, the video I did with the girls, 25 bookish things about us, uh, you may realize that I have kind of a thing about British male narrators. So this is going to be very heavy on British and pretty much 100% male narrators. I don't know why I don't have a lot of female narrators I like. Um, I will have one at the end that my husband has suggested would be one that I will enjoy. So I will tell you about her and I'll give it a try soon and see what I think. But anyway, all men. Sorry about that. That's who I like to listen to. I can't talk about favorite male narrators without talking about Jim Dale. Jim Dale has been a favorite of mine for a long time. Um, I basically just associate him with audiobooks and had no idea who was an actor until earlier today. But the book that I have read the most or listened to the most by Jim Dale is the Harry Potter series. I've listened to all of these so many times. I've had tapes. I've had CDs. I have a problem, but I love the way Jim Dale narrates these. He's great. So, but I was checking through his other audiobooks that he has, and I am also thinking I would very much enjoy The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I did read that one in the past year or so, um, and I really enjoyed it, and I just imagine he would do a fabulous job with that. And also I saw that he has an Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne audiobook, and it seems like that would be one I would probably enjoy too. Jim Weiss is another fabulous narrator of audiobooks. Um, I haven't listened to very many of his full-length audiobooks. Actually, I don't know if I've done any of them. But he does these Great Hall Productions CDs, and we've used these a lot in homeschooling over the years, so I have like a million of them. So we've got A Christmas Carol, Gone West, Greek Myths, Egyptian Treasures, Mummies and Myths, Thomas Jefferson's America, Tales from the Old Testament, Celtic Treasures, Masters of the Renaissance, and I'm pretty sure we have a Shakespeare one, but that one probably never leaves Charlotte's room. So these are all about hour-long little audiobooks. Um, he does a great job with them. So if you have younger kids, this is a great place to start with audiobooks um, because they target them much, much younger and they're much shorter. So I was looking through other things that Jim Weiss has done and I think I would very much enjoy, and this is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time, Carry On Mr. Bowditch, or Bowditch, I'm not really sure, uh, by Jean, Jean Lee Latham. That's one that's been recommended to me over and over again. I think we have a paperback copy around here. I should read it sometime. And then he also narrated Come On Ski Biscuit by Ralph Moody. And I've enjoyed a lot of Ralph Moody's books. So I think that one could be fun. Christopher Timothy is a great audiobook narrator. Uh, the books that we've listened to by Christopher Timothy have been the All Creatures Great and Small series. We're currently on the third of those books out of four. Um, he does just such a great job of being James Harriet, and I guess he also was James Harriet in a TV show, so I guess that makes sense, and he's narrated pretty much all the James Harriet stuff. Um, but I was looking through the other uh, books that he has narrated, and I found one called Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope that looked interesting, so that's one that maybe I might listen to in the future. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has been a favorite book of mine for a very long time, and I was trying to figure out who had narrated the audiobooks we listened to years and years ago, and my husband and I both think that they were narrated by the author Douglas Adams, and they were fabulous, uh, but I do have one of them on Audible that's narrated by Martin Freeman, and there really hasn't been anything that Martin Freeman's done that I haven't enjoyed, although he hasn't narrated a whole lot of audiobooks, so I don't have a list of ones I'd like to listen to other than um, his version of The Hitchhiker's Guide. And while talking about Hitchhiker's Guide, I think I'll also talk about Stephen Fry, because he has also done 
uh, version of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, if the ones we listened to weren't Douglas Adams, they were probably Stephen Fry. It's kind of hard to remember because it was a long time ago before I had kids. Um, but I just love those audiobooks. They are so much fun, such a fun book, such good narration. So besides the Hitchhiker's Guide, some other things that I might be interested in with Stephen Fry is he uh, did the a Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. So the, Mike, the Paddington books he's narrated, and those could be pretty fun. And then he was also the British narrator of the Harry Potter series. And those, I think, are available on Audible now. So part of me wants to listen to that, but part of me just loves Jim Dale too much. So we'll just have to see if I ever listen to the Stephen Fry version. The fiction author that made my favorite narrator list is Neil Gaiman. Now, he could read me the phone book and I would listen. The first Neil Gaiman book that we listened to is called Fortunately the Milk, and it is the funniest thing ever, and if you haven't heard it, you should go check it out. It's not very long. I'm thinking maybe an hour-ish, so it's very short and it's very family-friendly. Um, it's all about a dad who's left alone with the kids, and he goes out to get some milk for their breakfast and is abducted by aliens and all sorts of fabulous things happen. And so he's telling the whole story to the kids when he finally gets back home. Um, the other Neil Gaiman book that I've listened to is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. That one was also great. I think I gave it five stars. Um, it's an amazing story and just so relaxing to listen to Neil Gaiman. One that I have that I'm meaning to read that's been downloaded on my phone for a long time, but I just haven't started, is his Norse mythology. So I'm looking forward to listening to that one. I'm sure there's more that I would enjoy. I didn't research him too much because I don't need the list. I have enough books right now. Gary Sneeze is one that I was kind of surprised how much I enjoyed his narration. He narrated Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. And I thought he did an amazing job of that book. So I was kind of looking through what else he's narrated to see what else would interest me. And it's more Steinbeck. He also narrated Of Mice and Men. So that's another one that I might be interested in listening to someday. Grover Gardner is the narrator who did Love in the Ruins by Walker Percy. And I listened to that last year and thought it was really well done. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the narration. It all just worked together well. So I was looking into what else Grover Gardner has done. And some of the ones that interested me were Life on the Mississippi by Mark Twain. The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. Uh, it Can't Happen Here by Sinclair Lewis. And The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. Sinclair Lewis and, Up Lewis and Upton Sinclair, both. So those were all kind of interesting to me. Simon Vance has long been a favorite narrator of mine. We have his complete Sherlock Holmes collection. Um, and we've also listened to The Tale of Two Cities that he's done. And he also did a version of Black Beauty that we've listened to. I don't really remember much about Black Beauty because it's been a number of years. But <laughs> Tale of Two Cities and this Sherlock collection both fabulous. So I was looking through what else Simon Vance has. And I think we already own David Copperfield with uh, Simon Vance narrating. So I have that one waiting for me. Um, and we also have The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Pyle. Um, and that also we already have in Audible, I think. But couple books that looked interesting were His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. I haven't read any Naomi Novik, but they've looked interesting. Oliver Twist, another Dickens book. Um, the Abolition of Man and the Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. Um, a lot of times nonfiction is narrated by terrible people. So when I see nonfiction narrated by really good narrators, it catches my eye. And The Three Musketeers by Dumas. So those are some more books by Simon Vance that I might be or narrated by Simon Vance that I might like to listen to. Johnny Heller narrated the audiobook for MASH by Richard Hooker. So this is the book that the TV show MASH is based upon. 
and it's hilarious. It's not super family appropriate. I would say it's not as family appropriate as the TV show. Uh, but I really enjoyed listening to this while driving around a couple summers ago. Um, and I thought he just did an amazing job on that book. So I was kind of looking through what else he had. And the only thing that really appealed to me that I would like to listen to that he had, he had plenty of books, it seems like, but they just weren't really books I was interested in. But he did a narration of Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, which is one of my favorite children's books ever. And um, I actually was playing samples on my phone during lunch when my husband was home. And I played the sample for that and then another sample for some nonfiction book. I can't even remember what it was. Um, back to back and my husband couldn't even tell that they were the same narrator. He's that good at voices. So his voice for Alexander just sounds amazing. So that's one that I would like check out from the library. I don't think it's really worth it to buy the audiobook version of Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day because it's not very long, but it sounded good. Ralph Cosham is one that we have several audible books from. Uh, first one that we had was Watership Down by Richard Adams. Um, and that was just really well done. We listened to that as a family, um, very family friendly book. I mean, there's some not pleasant things that happen to the poor rabbits in the book, but it's not too terribly scary. Um, so he did an excellent job on Watership Down. We've also listened to The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orksy. Um, and I liked the narration of that one as well. And um, I also saw that he had a narration of The Jungle Book. We checked out a copy of The Jungle Book that was very well narrated. Um, I think maybe last year during swim season when we were driving around. So I'm not sure if it was narrated by him, but it sounded like it might have been the same one. So we'll put that in ones I've listened to because it probably was. And then there, he had a whole bunch that I was interested in on his list of books in Audible. So we already have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. Um, that's just sitting in our 120 some Audible books waiting for somebody to get to it. He also has Animal Farm by George Orwell. That one looked good. There's also The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. That's one that my girls will be reading next year for school. So I like to get those books in the Audible format as well as in a paper format so that the girls can go back and forth or pick one. Eva tends to like audiobooks a lot more. Charlotte's a lot more likely to pick up a paper copy. So I like to have all of those both. Also, Paradise Lost by John Milton, and The Divine Comedy by Dante. And then something by C.S. Lewis that's written so badly that I can't read it all. Okay, apparently he also has just lots of C.S. Lewis, so he's a good narrator if you're interested in listening to some C.S. Lewis. Still don't know what the one I wrote down, though, was. Richard Armitage. Um is another great narrator. Uh, the one I've listened to by him was The Chimes by Dickens. It's a short like three or four hour book um, and I enjoyed listening to that one. Um, and the other audiobook by Richard Armitage that looked interesting to me was The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. It just sounded like a good one. Perhaps my favorite audiobook narrator of all time is Rob Inglis. Now he narrated The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, did a fabulous job on all of those. I noticed in Audible there was also something called Le Hobbit, so I don't know if he narrated it in another language too. That'd be pretty cool if he did. Um, but another book that appealed to me that he has narrated, actually a whole series, he narrated the Wizard of Earthsea series by Ursula Le Guin. So there were several of those, but I haven't read any of them. So that's one that I might be interested in someday. Simon Preble is another one that we've listened to an audiobook from that I really enjoyed. And that was Great Expectations by Dickens. Uh, it was just really well done. His voices are hilarious. Uh, very good actor. 
<laughs> but some of the other ones that he had listed that I'm interested in are 1984 by George Orwell, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, and The Death of Ivan Ilyevich. I don't know how to pronounce Russian things, and uh, that's by Leo Tolstoy. So I, I do like Russian books. I am terrible at Russian name pronunciation. Uh, another one that we have a couple physical CDs from is Patrick Stewart. So Patrick Stewart narrated the last battle from the Chronicles of Narnia. This is my favorite of the narrations from the Chronicles of Narnia audiobook set. It's not my favorite of the books. Uh, my favorite book is A Horse and Its Boy. Um... And then I probably like um, Prince Caspian and Voyage of the Dawn Treader. But this is my favorite of the narrations because Patrick Stewart just does an excellent job. You really can't go wrong with Patrick Stewart. And then we also have Patrick Stewart doing A Christmas Carol. And this has had hard life, as you can see. But this is a great one for Christmas time. Um, it's a stage production, so it's not the entire Christmas Carol, and it's got a lot of sound effects and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think it's unabridged, but it's amazing. So I highly recommend that one. And then there wasn't a whole lot else that Patrick Stewart has done that I was interested in, so I don't have any more suggestions. Kenneth Branagh did The Magician's Nephew. This might be my least favorite of the Narnia books, but he does a good job of narrating it. Um, so Kenneth Branagh, of course, is a great narrator. Some other ones that he's done that I might like to get to someday include Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. That one might be an audible exclusive or an audible original or something. Um, and then Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Um, Michael York narrated The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And this one's pretty good. I don't have any complaints about it. Um, so this is the only one I've listened to by Michael York. But we have in our Audible waiting for me to get to it, a Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Um, and then a couple more that sounded kind of interesting were Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton and Treasure Island by Robert Lewis. Lewis. Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Jeremy Northam uh, narrated The Silver Chair, another pretty good narration from the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, and the other book that I saw that he narrated that I would be interested in is Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. Um, I love Bride's Head Revisited. I've read it before. I just think I'd really enjoy the audiobook version of it. So that's Jeremy Northam. Alex Jennings narrated The Horse and His Boy, which is my favorite of the Narnia books, um, and does a pretty good job. It's no Patrick Stewart, but still pretty good. Um, and then the other thing that he has narrated that looked pretty interesting to me was The Tenet of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. So maybe someday I'll pick up and listen to that one. Due to the fact that apparently I only like male narrators, and nine times out of ten they have to be British. Um, my husband did suggest one female narrator to me. He said he really enjoyed the best narrator, female narrator that he's listened to was uh, Rosamund Pike in Pride and Prejudice. Oh yeah, she a lot of Jane Austen sense and sensibility. The family of Dashwood had long been settled in Sussex. At least she's British? I don't know. So... One of these days, I really should make myself listen to Pride and Prejudice because it's one of those books that I've never read because I just don't have much interest in it. Unless I had to read it in school. But if I did have to read it in school, clearly it wasn't that memorable because I don't remember if I read it in school or not. So, so I may give Rosamund Pike a try to see if I can develop a favorite narrator that's just British and not male. We'll see. But anyway... Those were my favorite narrators, plus one that my husband suggested I try. Um, so let me know in the comments if you have a favorite narrator, if you share one of my favorites, or if you have somebody else you think I should check out, particularly if they're British and male, because 
clearly I have a thing. So um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and so you don't miss a video. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.